there's so many playable races. Uh, and, and, and they all have their unique things. The Thrykreen. Thrykreen are an insectile folk. They appear in the Monster Manual. Uh, they have appeared in various D&D worlds over the years. Uh, they're in the Forgotten Realms. People also often associate them with Athos, the world of Dark Sun. They are a kind of fascinating people, uh, partly because they don't speak the way other folk do. The Thrykreen have been in the game forever, going all the way back to first edition. They are insectile beings. Uh, who, because of the way their mandibles are built, they don't communicate, uh, they don't speak languages like common the way a lot of people do, but that's okay because they have telepathy. They have this innate psychic ability to communicate telepathically uh, with people of all sorts, which I think is neat because you can imagine these these large, you know, human-sized insects walking around often serving as amazing diplomats, you know, peacemakers. Oh, uh, good point, yeah. But they could also be kind of terrifying, because I always, anytime we introduce uh, any creature or people with telepathy, I always think of the utility of it, but also how kind of creepy it would be if suddenly there's a voice in my head. Yeah. You know, where is <laughs> the, it coming there's from? There's a bug in my brain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you might not know it's coming from uh, this insect-like person over there. Uh, you know, it might take a while to actually nail down where is this voice coming from. Uh, Thrykreen also are well known for having uh, more than two arms. They have, they have a set of smaller little arms that they can use to hold things, manipulate objects, and even use light weapons in. And uh, so this, this can make them quite fearsome. They, they also have kind of like a bit of a camouflage ability as well, right? Yes, so their carapace not only pr uh, provides them with an armor class boost, provided they're not wearing other armor, but it also can change colors so that they can blend in with their environment. So you might be, say, walking through a desert and think, oh, look, there's that rock formation over there, and maybe not realize there's actually a group of Thrykreen uh, who have pressed themselves up against those rocks, changed the color of their carapace, and are just blending into uh, the environment. They also are sleepless. So like elves, they don't have to sleep. Uh, in fact, autonomes also in this uh, in this book also don't have to sleep. I envy all these people that we create <laughs> who don't have to sleep. Just think of all the things you could get done. <laughs> Thrykreen have a different footprint on the different worlds that they appear in. Uh, but unlike, say, the astral elves that have an empire that touches various worlds, Thrykreen are much more like the other peoples of the D&D multiverse who have sort of very different expressions in the different worlds that they have come to inhabit. The last time they were really a playable race was in the Dark Sun setting. Um, and, uh, but in updating Spelljammer, when I was looking at the um, races from Star Frontiers, TSR's old science fiction game, well, we, we had the old blob folk. We brought them forward. We brought, folk, we brought forward the Azarians or the Hadozi or the monkey folk. There was another non-human race in Star Frontiers, and they were insectile. Um, they were a sort of insect centaur called the Vrusk. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I could bring them forward like the others, but you know, we already have an insectile being in the core game that people love um, and, ha and has been a playable race in the past. So why not just bring the Thrykreen into our space adventure? And uh, what I loved about that is, you know, if you create the most wackadoo spell jamming party of adventurers, they're gonna be, there's gonna be the blob, there's gonna be the flying squirrel monkey guy, there's gonna be the, um, the hippo headed folk, the mechanical dude, and then there's gonna be this this six-armed bug creature, and it just felt like it was completing the set. That must have been a delight to like 
work on playable races that were so broad. <laughs> yes, because as, as you know, most of the races that we have introduced officially are humanoid. Yeah. Um, and this was an opportunity to say, well, let's, here is the time to go out and explore some of the other creature types. Can you play a construct? Can you play a news? Can you play a monstrosity? Um, now is the time. If you liked this interview and you'd like to see more, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little bell symbol so you're notified anytime a video like this comes out. Thank you so much for watching.